that I've been raving about you to uh -oh. everyone. Hi, I'm Claudia. Hey, Claudia, we got to work on that shake, don't we? A Lifetime original movie. Is he living with you kids at the dorm? Crepes a la Ray. <laughs> Ripped from the headlines. He's spending nights in one of the girls' bedrooms. Parents are allowed to visit their kids, and the students are legally the age of consent. Based on a true story. Larry just pays for everything. <laughs> He's the life of the party. Roll it! Yeah! You're thrust into this world. There's no guidance. I can help all you kids. What are you holding back? What are you holding back? <laughs> Larry's been helping me. Sweetie, this man's a criminal. Larry is the only person who can protect us. Thank you so much for pushing me even further. That is classic suppressed memory syndrome. I don't remember anything too traumatic. You are a horrible, horrible, horrible man. No, Claudia, don't listen. I'm not done. I'm not going back to jail. A reporter is writing a story about you. I helped you all with your mental health. Devil on Campus, the Larry Ray story. Premieres Sunday, June 23rd at 8. Part of truly unbelievable movies. A ripped from the headlines event. Only on Lifetime. Hi, everyone. Our second panel for today features star Billy Zane and executive producer and director Elizabeth Rome from Devil on Campus, The Larry Ray Story. Welcome. Hello. Uh, hello. Our first question is from Sincerely BB Blogging. Hi. So first of all, thank you for allowing me to be here. Devil on Campus. Um, as a parent myself that dealt with two children just going off to campus, it is not understanding as a first timer, how challenging was it for you to actually be there to see how it starts all, but also want to hold back some in, in the character of as the dad and the mom? Billy, you want to take that? Um, are you asking about the parents? In right, as the parents. Yes, as that the parents. Elizabeth and uh, the father. Yes. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, first of all, thank, thanks so much to Billy for being here and all of you guys. We're really grateful for this time. Um, yeah, I mean, I I was it was engaged in this to play this role because I was a Sarah Lawrence student, and I think sort of flipping it and getting to play the mother of one of these kids who was victimized like this um gave me a great opportunity to lean in. And I have a child, so I know what that feels like and looks like. So, um, yeah, you know, we had to tear it up because this was a bad, bad guy. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to watch it um, and blog about it on Twitter or AKA X. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from Jamie Ruby. Hi, thanks for talking to us. Um, for both of you, what was it about either the project or your roles that just made you think you had to do it? Um, beyond, um, you know, yet another applicable cautionary tale, um, the fact that it was certainly a true story, uh, the, the, almost absurdity of the circumstance and the um from a pure narrative standpoint as a piece of entertainment i found there was there was a level of um, i'm hearing somebody who was knew how to carry a room somebody's talking Can anyone commute who All right. Right. Thank, you. thank you um I, I found that you know tapping into uh the the why people would maintain and engage with this person and and Liz and I found that it was the charm of this character and his ability to have dynamic uh uh dynamics like like humor and was witty and we we just we we found this counterpoint which was not only exciting to watch because it created a false sense of security and then a very exciting and kind of terrifying counterpoint um but uh so it was just narratively it was just very interesting structurally and as a character interesting to play but was also led into the very elements of why um these kids just opted in to you know, signed on, um, and we're so taken by this personality. It was a personality that was just really exciting to play while being, again, terrifying and unnerving and, you know, 
functional in its cautionary um, presentation, but from a purely creative standpoint, I just found it uh, an incredible um, challenge and tapped. For me, it, it it went back to some of the earlier performances I had done and forged my way with, which was, you know, I haven't played someone that unhinged in a long time. Um, shine from it personally, but I'd rather, I, I enjoyed going to that place because it was very, uh, very liberating and challenging creatively. Right. Elizabeth, what about you? Yeah, for, for me, like I said before, I went to Sarah Lawrence College and I know I'm, I was a student that this would have happened to, you know, so by the grace of God, go I, that something like this didn't happen in my younger years there. Sarah Lawrence is an incredible college and I, I admire the students and the school so much. And I wanted to make sure that the kids themselves really were as they are there, which are, are smart, inquisitive, deep, complicated, you know, um, the slogan for Sarah Lawrence is we are different. So are you. So if you're different and you're deep and you're seeking, you know, that's a Sarah Lawrence student and enrolls this guy who's so seductive, so smart, so emotionally intelligent, has all the time in the world for these kids. And you get what happens next, right? He's the total seductor. And Billy and I, we were really committed to portraying not only his character with all of those attributes that Billy explained, but also what that does then for the victims and the students. It actually shows that they weren't fools. You know, they weren't foolish and they were vulnerable, but they were heavily manipulated by a mastermind. So um, we were committed to telling the story for real, but also really not doing the typical sort of victim story right? The victim is a victim. In this case, the victims were very bright and he was really smart and really seductive and funny and charming. And, and also, of... and also a victim, you know, this is about the cycle of trauma. So it's right. not the bad for bad sake. Right. And that, that's really what I thought was interesting was to shine a light upon how do you break this cycle of this behavior? You know, people compensate and exert power over others because at some point in their life they felt powerless or traumatize others because they were traumatized. And that was the cycle of this character. And I thought, I think we need, you know, m many more stories that go, that lift the curtain on, you know, the, that journey and just in terms of how to perhaps break that cycle before that uh, perpetuates with you know, yet more victims. Okay, great. Thank you, both of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next question is from Interrupted Blogs. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you so much for having me. My question is for Billy Zane. Um, you've played close to 200 roles, so it's safe to say you're pro jumping into and out of character. But for someone as menacing and psychologically twisted as Larry Ray, how did you unpack and pack for this role mentally? Um, like most, which which relies on um, instinct and osmosis, I suppose you you know you slip into it like a jacket, and and you you know I I I I really examine my first impulses that come, and there are some rhythms and choices that come, but it's a very it's a kind of elusive and opaque process for me. And I and in doing so, I found choices that surprised me. And I check in with Liz. I'd be like, "What if we turn this completely on its head? Like it was written to be this, you know? What if we did that with it? And then by that, and that would often fall into a, a rhythm and a pattern that was just uh, so surprising and engaging that when we do fall into convention, it that lands in a much more effective way so uh, my process is uh you know uh, there's there's levels of preparation and and i studied you know his voice and i put on a bunch of weight you know he was a he was hev a heavier man and i had just come off of this uh, marlon brando project which he, well, he i didn't marlon wasn't particularly heavy he was just not you know a gym rat at that time but i i quickly kind of just carved it up and let it all hang out which was a really kind of nice challenge as well we I, I, you know channeling my 
third act <laughs> crazy Bill Blair with like a very, you know. Um, yeah, so I I physically put on a you know put on the tonnage and and felt him in my body, but then we uh, we just we just went for um, and the voice was again very specific, raised pitch affected a particular kind of lisp, um, and uh, so I just loved all of those devices. I haven't done I haven't gone that like that. It, it, I don't know, in a while into those many attractive elements that an actor approaches. It was purely, it was more, it was more of an acting exercise yeah, than, than another kind of fear mongering narrative that <laughs> turned me on. Thank you so much. Our next question is from L. Clark. Good afternoon, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Now, this is definitely a very terrifying story, but you guys would have lived the rule based on the script. So what advice would you give to kids um, as it relates to what signs to look out for if one of their friends, parents is being inappropriate? Like what signs based on the script, based on the story, would you now give to young kids entering college? Don't trust your friend's parents, no. Um, I would say that this movie is a cautionary tale um, that you know, again, a lot of why we chose to explore Billy's character as we did is because, you know, uh, wolves come in sheep's clothing, right? So this was a person who, uh, you know, even had these children disarmed because he was the parent of one of them. And, you know, so I would just, you know, really say, keep your faculties aware, you know, and, and don't trust people until they've really earned your trust. I think that was another part of this domino effect with these kids one of the kids really had a great relationship with Larry Ray's daughter. And because of that and, and feeling very close to Larry Ray, you know, his siblings put their radar down and they didn't really vet him. They trusted him because their sibling did. So, you know, think for yourself and, you know, and even really vet, you know, when you're love bombed, love bombing is a big part of this kind of programming and brainwashing and the seductive manipulation. So, you know, really just take your time and getting to know people and letting people in. Awesome. Billy, would you like to add anything to that? No. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next question is from Abby Bernstein. Hi, um, I'd like to ask you about your collaboration with each other. Um, Ms. Rome, is there a difference in directing somebody who's done about 200 projects like Mr. Zane versus some of your younger and less experienced castmates and directing yourself? And Mr. Zane, is there a difference uh, in being directed by somebody who comes from an acting background versus somebody who comes from a different sort of background. I'll jump in on this one first because I'm just, yeah. I can't wait to send a compliment. I, I, <laughs> Elizabeth's one of the, my favorite directors I've worked with. I mean, I, I, and it's because she's an actor. It's that simple. Um, actors make good directors. They just understand, they get the process. It's just, it's, it's, it's in the DNA and it's a gene. And now to break her away from that grouping as an individual, you know, all that has led to whatever is this wonderful woman. I, it, to to collaborate with her is a is a great gift. And under you know any schedule, one that is press, or if we had all the time in the world, no money, it would be a similar dynamic. We you were you know she was incredibly brave and um, smart. It was just it was just an intelligence and an emotional intelligence and a willingness to to commit to a choice. Um, and it was playful um, in that respect. It just, it, all, of, all of the things that needed to be set for, to, to um, take on the challenge and, and give the subject the gravitas and the respect it required, yet have the spirit of play and freedom to propose where no idea was too radical. And then we find a happy medium or challenge each other to go farther. So um, it was uh, by all means unique and in the very best sense of the word. And and I would just say that it is the most dreamy thing in the world to work with Billy Zane. Um, it's I, I hope it's there's many more projects ahead. 
Um, tonally, we we match. You know, I get him and I love working with him, but it is totally a collaboration because much, much respect to Billy, too, is a great director. So it's a dance that we're doing together. And like you said, when you're working with the younger actors, they're incredible, they're intuitive, and they're bright and lovely and wonderful and have beautiful futures, I think. But it's very different when you're walking hand in hand with a st your star who is a star, who's done incredibly um, powerful performances, is a great filmmaker and a great painter, just a great artist and a visionary. So together, um, you know, and I think we have the same taste in things. So I, I think our humor and, and, you know, we sparked off each other and I hope there are many more projects to come. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Our next question is from Nye from your web. Hi there. My question is for Mr. Zane. Um, sir, as I, I was watching this incredible film, I could not help. By the end of it, they let us know that Larry Ray is in prison. He was sentenced to what, I think 50 or 60 years or something like that. And I couldn't help but think about your approach to playing a morally corrupt real life person <laughs> like Larry Ray. So I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind answering this. If you got the opportunity to visit him in prison or speak to him over the phone, what would you ask him? What would you say to him? I'm not a fan of hypotheticals like that. I'm not going on the record with them. So um, I wouldn't. Sorry. Well, I'll ask a follow up question. What What were yeah. some of the most challenging scenes to film and how did you prepare for them? Thank you. Happily. Um, the interrogation scenes, uh, and the, and, and the ones that required levels of, of like where he touched upon, he went from beyond, uh, emotional abuse to physical abuse were, were unnerving and disturbing to me. I mean, I just, yeah, actors in general, I think <laughs> should have emotional stunt pay because I, I, I do, I, I do, I do believe the, the, the secondary experience encroaches on the primary for audiences and for actors alike. Whenever we, you know, try to make something real and we, we, you know, fire off all those, all these, the same chemicals and the dopamine and serotonin and adrenaline and our bodies are taxed as if these things are primary and really happening. So it's a lot, it's a lot for the actors you work with. It's a lot to, 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 for yourself and it's a lot to impose upon another in the interest of of art uh or or you know storytelling so um drama trauma drama is is hard work any way you slice it especially if you're doing it well and believably because it requires complete biological conviction and fooling your body that you are actually experiencing these things so you can imagine when you traffic that to uh um you know horror and you know the worst of that or any of those kind of terror you know especially for the you know, actresses i think they catch the brunt of it women just the, the amount of young actors who have to undergo such <laughs> horrible journeys so anyway that was the hard the hardest part was having this <laughs> philosophy and engaging uh in the practice. That was the hardest thing was unpacking that. But Billy was so great with all of these kids and really took it upon himself to, you know, just be there, a source of support and make it um, something that they could be excited about as opposed to intimidated by him. And he just really reached out to them. So there was a lot of safety, a lot of nurturing from him to them. And they felt it. And it actually really played well into the movie because, of course, you know, he is he is their Pied Piper, you know, and um, and so there was a deep connection Billy maintained and created with the students, which was great. They were wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, they were all great. They're just lovely people, you know. I mean, so we, yeah, you you form that bond without the psychosis. And, <laughs> and then, you know, we just do the lines and hit them. It carried it. There was it carried a bonding truth, which was fun. 